You're watching Florida Man TV. Let's do this. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. This video is hopefully going to be entertaining and exciting for you. So I am about to embark on my first big journey in the Hobie Adventure Island. We're going on a four-day sail island hop overnight camping trip. So let me give you a quick rundown of how I'm loaded out here. All right, in the back here, we've got our food and our water. I have taken uh, just a bunch of MREs because they are very easy. You don't need uh, to have a grill or any kind of stuff like that. So we've got MREs, water back here, and a little beer. That's back there. Of course, my clothing, some ice, my camping chair, all just the Hobie stuff here. Up front is where I've got my tent and my blankets and pillow and stuff like that in there. Uh, and then the center hatch here, no big deal, is just where I've got my ropes, my anchor, and my uh, batteries. So I had one 8 amp hour battery. If you guys have watched the previous videos, I've added three more 8 amp, eight amp out batteries. <laughs> 8 amp hour batteries. Jeez, can't talk yet. It's early. But, uh, so we have four eight amp hour batteries. We're gonna see if that will make us all the way through the entire trip. So I gotta go pay here and uh, for the parking for four days and I'll be back with you guys on the water. Okay guys, we're off. Official start of the trip. Four days on this kayak, toes in the sand. Now, we're not off to a great start as you can see. Uh, we literally have no wind and the first stop is McCray Cove in Pensacola Florida and that's about six miles away so I've got a, a heck of a paddle I hope the wind picks up today and we're not literally paddling or pedaling 120 miles this entire trips 120 miles let me quickly go through the route for you so you got an idea so we are here, and I'm gonna back this out. Hopefully you guys can see all of this. This is McCray Cove here, that's stop one, and then today we're continuing on all the way over to here, that is Sabine, Big Sabine. Then from Big Sabine, the next day, we're camping overnight here at Big Sabine. And then we're gonna go over here to Specter Island camp overnight specter island then we're going to come all the way back and stop here at dead man's uh, island right here and we're going to camp overnight on dead man's island and then back over here to where i launched from on the fourth day so um i have faith that the wind's going to pick up but for now i'm going to keep pedaling oh forgot to tell you they had a meeting at 8 o'clock, and everybody should be leaving, I'm guessing, 8.30 or so. I'm hoping maybe a lot later than that, but the ramp doesn't open till 8. So I missed the meeting, and I'm literally behind everybody else by probably two hours. So we'll meet everybody at Big Sabine probably uh, tonight, but I think this first day I'm going to be solo because those guys are going to be way out in front of me. Anyway... I'm going to enjoy being out here on the salt water, and I will see you guys at McCray Cove and give you an update on how late I am. Look at how dead calm the water is. I mean, absolutely zero wind. We're technically sailing, boys. We're technically sailing. I don't have to pedal, and we're maintaining about the same little bit faster speed at 4.2 to 4.3 uh, mile an hour here so after pedaling for four and a half miles now I get to sit back a little bit and actually sail well fine just barge your way through then come on that was a platinum dad joke right there 
You should have hit the like button for that dad joke right there. <laughs> Okay, boys and girls, welcome to Fort McRae and McRae Cove. So you got McRae Cove here. Fort McRae is back there. It's a remnants of an old fort used to protect Pensacola Bay. The Pensacola Pass is right up there. And it's a beautiful little spot, as you can see. Nice blue water, sandy, sandy beach. This is the party hangout spot for Pensacola. Hobie did pretty good. It took us four hours to go six miles, but we made it here. And this is where they were meeting this morning at 8 a.m. <laughs> so we are way behind. And I guess it's only fitting since the military base is right over there and we packed MREs. It only makes sense to eat an MRE next to the military base. So I'm going to grab myself a snack, stretch my legs a little bit here, go uh, use the facility, and then uh, we'll get back on our way sailing and try and get to the first island before dark and uh, <laughs> get our tent and shit set up. So... Found some friends back there. I don't know if they're in the Florida 120, but they're kind of sailing together. And uh, they're definitely going a little bit quicker than me in the same wind. We'll find out if they're at Big Sabine when I get there. under the bridge come on we're nearly there let's go ah no wind there we go just had to blow on it a little bit we are six miles from our destination for the night so uh we're gonna keep on trekking here if my wind would come back, this bridge ain't so good for wind. Sun has been in and out, not gonna lie to you. I'm a little chilly, just a teeny tiny bit, not too bad. But when you're wet and there's five mile an hour wind and you've got no sun, it kind of sucks. But uh, we're moving along. I have found some other little boats. So I think I'm going in the right direction because that's where everybody else is going. So. We'll see you on Big Sabine unless something cool happens. All right, guys. You see that little sailboat up here? About the one o'clock position. I have not caught or passed anybody today. And so my goal, my mission, is to pass this guy. You think the Hobie can do it? Drop a comment. Think we can catch him? We're gaining on them, guys. Come on, little Hobie. Come on, little Hobie. We're gonna get them, guys. You guys with the Florida 120? You wanna trade boats? I'm freezing my ass off over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I uh, got a real late start today. I started from uh, the west side of Big Lagoon over at the, the Big Lagoon boat ramp. And it didn't open till eight. You guys had your meeting at eight, so I had to chase everybody down. Oh, I gotcha. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I got it on the plotter here. See you at the beach. We got them, guys. We passed them. 
All right, status update here. Uh, there's not supposed to be this much water this high up. <laughs> I think we're sitting a little low in the water, which means that we have water in the hole and probably a decent bit of it. We are, uh, we're sitting pretty low. You know, the, uh, the stern there shouldn't really be like underwater. Um, and I can tell from where the water level is here. I mean, we, uh, we're filling up. Now, I don't think we're gonna sink. That's not an issue. But I've got four batteries down there that control this guy. And I'm hoping that uh, those contacts aren't underwater. I mean, the battery is pretty tall, but I don't know how much is in there. I'd like to open the hatch and check, but if I open the hatch with that much water right there, I'm gonna add more water to it. So we gotta make it about an hour and then uh, we'll find out how much water is in there. Now, 10 year old Hobie, the hatches are not very uh, perfect, I guess. They leak a little bit. And I'm thinking mainly from up front here because we don't go over waves, we go through them, and that hatch leaks pretty bad, I think. But we're not, uh, we're not helping the problem by having this hatch underwater because it doesn't seal 100% really either. Nothing seals 100%. Sorry for the water on the camera, too. Anyway, let's see if we can make it an hour, and then uh, I'll open up the hatches when we get up on the beach, and I'll give you a status report on how wet all my stuff is. Now, I did wrap everything in plastic because I figured we were going to take on a lot of water sailing in the, uh, the bay all day. <clears throat> I'm not really nervous. But I just don't want all my stuff to be wet. <laughs> all right, enough rambling. Sorry, guys. We'll see you on the, the beach, and uh, I'll give you an update on this. All right, guys. We are approaching Big Sabine Peninsula. That's Big Sabine up here. I don't really see many boats, so I don't know where they all are, but we'll find them. I see a couple of sails up there on the point. Situation as far as our... Uh, flooding goes is getting a little worse this entire hatch now is always underwater which means it's probably dripping through there and uh we filling up guys <laughs> so uh i think we're gonna make it though we're not gonna die and uh probably about five minutes from now i will be on the beach and be able to pump all this water out so let's get up there all right guys i'm gonna hit this beach here before i find out where the rest of these people are we need to figure out what's going on with our water i think i'm gonna go ahead and pull the dagger board here we're gonna unlock our rudder and get ready to pull the rudder and we're gonna use the sail to go ahead and beach us we're in uh, about two foot of water. All righty. Unlock sail, rudder up. All right. Not too shabby. And coast right on in here. All right, let's get out and see <laughs> how bad we are. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna leave it floating because I want to see really what our water level is. Oh shit. I don't know how the Garmin is working. We have lost our negative lead here, probably from these ropes sloshing around look at that guys we are right at the top of the batteries in fact the back batteries are underwater 
and uh, yeah so what I got to do is get in this hatch and I got to get my bilge pump thing out let's pull her up on the beach so we don't go anywhere uh, ask for adventure almost sink here's all my clothing or not my clothing this is all my blankets and stuff you can see how much water is splashed around in here I'm pretty sure it's this hatch that that leaks water comes up and it slams up under here and it just goes in I hope I hope we don't have a hole leak or something but I'm gonna have to bilge this stuff out so for now we'll pull this Ugh. man I really got this packed in here didn't I all right, hang on, I'll be back. All right. Got the bilge pump. My tent up there is soaking wet. But fortunately, it looks like my pillow and all that stuff is not wet. So tent being wet, not a big deal. Looks like my blanket and my pillow and stuff should be dry. But we'll figure that out when we set up camp. Man, I'm chilly. All right, let's see how the old bilge works. All right guys, I'm gonna finish pumping all the water out. Now that we got it drained in the back, you can see we are full of water, literally. Uh, Good thing MREs are totally sealed up, so my food will still be fresh. I'm going to pump this thing out, figure out where these guys are setting up camp, and or just set up camp, and I'll be back. Boy, the adventure never stops, does it? Alright, we're going to make our way over there to where everybody else is, and then finally maybe I can get to the setting up the camp part. We're all pumped out. I think we're a little bit better, but if we if we take on a whole crap load of water again, then we got a leak in the hole somewhere. So we'll see what happens when we get over there. I'll check it again and uh, give you an update. But there's no shortage of adventure, that's for sure. Everybody's kind of shown up and we're all gonna get ready pitch tents Get set up for the night. I did get back over here and check to see if I had any more water in here And I did have a little bit um, So I don't know Where we're leaking or if it was just residual water uh, from the lines and stuff and the ropes I got in there but uh, I Got my trampoline out here We'll get things dried out. I'm gonna get the tent set up. And with the magic of television, you guys are gonna see the tent go up like. All right, just realized that the high tide mark is right up in here. So we're gonna have to move the tent somewhere, maybe up there a little bit and anchor it down just on top of this grass. I got an air mattress anyway, so it, it probably, I won't even feel this stuff, I don't imagine. But we'll go ahead and uh, get out of the high tide mark, get all set up and then we'll say a final goodbye for today. <laughs> we got all of our dry bags drying because they got wet when we swamped the uh, kayak we got all of our dry bag garbage bags drying because they got swamped but my blanket and stuff didn't get wet mattress was a little bit wet uh, my batteries and shit got wet through the dry bag that sucked but as you see I just kind of got everything my backpack was swamped uh, I've just got everything hanging out drying out pillow got a little water damage there and now it's time 
for the most treasured part of day one. Cheers guys, we'll see you on day two. Good morning guys, day two. We uh, all slept pretty good. A little bit chilly, but not too bad. Had a hoodie and a good blanket, so listened to the sound of the waves, fell asleep early, got up early, and everybody's getting packed up and we're ready for the 22 mile sail. I think it's 22, over to Spectre Island. So we gotta get the Hobie all packed up here and our tent and stuff packed up and make our way out there and to the east. So <clears throat> we'll get uh, get on with that. While I'm packing up, you guys enjoy some drone footage of Big Sabine. All right, guys, we're all packed up. Packed a little different this time. We got smart, learned on the first one. So we're ready to go, headed to Spectre Island, 22 miles. Let's get it. See if we can drift out of here with no dagger board yet. Yeah, there we go. All right, we're moving. All right, I think we can drop the dagger board in there and that will help us actually sail. There we go. So quick tip in case you guys don't know, the dagger board counteracts the wind pushing the boat sideways, creates force, so you go forward. And you sail a lot better that way. All right. Doing 4.6 miles an hour. Gonna have some decent wind, I hope, today. Hoo-wah. We're going to tack up this way, and then we're going to tack over that way and go east. 22 miles east. Let's go. Tacking. Come on. Come on around. All right. We're off, guys. I'll catch you down the way here when we stop for lunch, probably. Woo! 
we're sailing now boys we're cruising along about uh five miles an hour get a couple of good gusts we're hitting uh i don't know 5.5 almost six got six miles an hour a couple times looks like i have uh fixed my leaking issue Woo! uh don't have as much water in here now and i do believe it was a front hatch i will go over that with you in uh, one of the next clips coming up but i think we figured out our swamping issue but uh we're cruising along as long as that sun stays up i am good uh sun goes down though it would be chilly keep in mind that when you're sailing this wind hits the sail and then it dumps it right down on my lap so <laughs> it's uh wet and breezy but we're rocking it out man and uh having a good time we're gonna stop at navarre beach grab some lunch and some more provisions like some more water and ice and stuff like that and then we'll continue on to specter island but we are breaking through all this surf here <laughs> all right on that note guys i'll see you down at navarre beach You saw in the last clip, I have moved myself up onto the uh, the Aka here because uh, my shirt was soaking wet and with this wind, I was freezing my ass off. So I uh, did some ingenuity. I've got a cushion here. Uh, you like that shot, didn't you? I, have, <laughs> I got a cushion right here. And uh, so I'm sitting on this cushion on the Aka right here. And it's worked out pretty good. It keeps my torso pretty much dry and uh, and I'm a lot warmer. So if there's a, a beach shop or something there, I might even try and find a dry suit. We got two more days of this and it's a lot of fun, but it's not fun when you're freezing your ass off. So uh, wet ride, but uh, let's get up to Navarre Beach, find this restaurant and Tom Thumb resupply, get some ice for the cooler, get some lunch and enjoy the rest of the day. All right, guys, welcome to Navarre Beach. We're gonna go hit this restaurant and that Tom Thumb over there. But before we do that, let's see what we got for water. If you remember, I'm a leaking and I uh, did some adjustments to the front hatch and it did better, but we're not dry. See? Yeah, it's much better, but we're not dry. What I did, and we had some heavy waves today, definitely some heavy waves sailing today, but tied some knots in the bungees to really clamp it down and then I took this top seal off so that it sits down on there. It's definitely helping, but it's not a permanent fix, so. I don't know where all we're taking water, but we're going to pump it out, go get something to eat, and we'll be back for the rest of our trip up to Spectre Island. But at any rate, guys, I appreciate you watching up to this point so far. And if you like what you're seeing, hit the little thumbs up button. It really does help the, uh, the videos get out there so I get more views. Had a couple people ask me, man, your videos are okay. Why are you not getting any views? It's because you're not hitting the, the thumbs up button. And look, if you hate this video, hit the thumbs down. Interaction's interaction. I don't give a shit. So hit one of the buttons just so the video gets published out on the YouTube world, all right? And we'll see you at Spectre Island. Let's go.
rifles is flying. Now I don't really agree with him cutting across the bow of a sailing vessel, but that dude's going so fast and got so much control, I really don't care. And that was badass. Are they coming back? No. Those things are sick. Hell yeah, brother. Oh boy, it's pretty sad when you're getting passed by the slowest power boat <laughs> in existence. This is a double barge, man, not even a single barge. He's got two of these damn things in front of him. And he's still passing up the old Florida man. But, you know, he's cheating. He's got engines, that's cheating, that's cheating. But uh, uh, we actually uh, let our sail out a little bit to um, give him the right of way. Uh, this is one instance where sailing vessels do not have the right of way. Uh, barges have the right of way because they cannot maneuver like pretty much at all. They got to make very slow adjustments to stay on course. So we gave him some space and we slowed our roll a little bit because we're cutting over this way. Let me show you from this direction. Uh, for us to go max speed, we need to go this way and that will be cutting kind of right into him. So we slowed our roll to give him the right of way. He gave us a little boop poop to uh, thank, say thank you even though we were small. Um, but these guys are cool, man. And it's a little scenery for the Florida man to watch. But all right, we're gonna continue on as soon as he passes here. And we will, uh, again, get over to Spectre Island. Maybe, finally, sometime, before dark, I hope. Shout. Hi right, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that cool drone footage of me beaching here at Spectre Island because I thought I had pulled the rudder up when I came in, but I guess I put it back down when I was getting the drone ready. I don't know. Anyway, we got a problem. And it's because I was trying to get cool shots for you. So probably no more cool drone shots while I'm sailing. Because we broke the fucking rudder. However, not a big deal. These are designed to break at the shear pin. And I have the, uh, the little loop here. The snap ring is still there. Uh, and I brought more shear pins because that's where they're designed to break. So it's actually not a big deal. And they say you're supposed to change them about like every year or two years anyway because they get dry and brittle. So here's an opportunity to change them. And I brought two with me because I am a smart son of a... So we're going to... Uh, I don't know how the hell we're going to change that. We're going to get it changed. All better. <laughs> oh, guys, what a hell of a day. 22 miles in a Hobie is no freaking joke, man. I am tired. I am not focused, as you can tell, because I'm breaking my kayak and shit trying to get you guys good footage. Anyway, I'm going to set up my tent and stuff. I'm going to have a beverage, and I am going to probably call it an early night. I will see you guys in the morning. Love ya. Oh yeah, boys, it's going to be a fun one tonight. Thunderstorm rolling in. The adventure never stops, guys. <laughs> the adventure never stops. Good morning guys, day three, and uh, we are off as you can see. Leave Inspector Island behind me here, and uh, we are on our way to Dead Man's Island. Dead Man's Island got its name because they used to use this point as a quarantine spot for 
new sailors or immigrants that were coming into the Pensacola area. Obviously, some didn't make it. Dead man's island, right? <clears throat> so hopefully we don't die, but I think we'll be okay. We have a, uh, a wind from the east today, so we get to do some downwind sailing. Hopefully that means calmer conditions. I don't get as wet. You see, I've actually got my hoodie on here. It was uh, it's pretty chilly when you, uh, when you get soaking wet here. So hopefully I can stay dry today, sitting up on top of my gear here and uh, get a little sailing footage for you. And we will see you further on down the bay. Well, I've changed into my summer attire because I'm just sitting here baking in the sun, even though this is a stinky shirt. Uh, I needed some cooling effect. We are dead, dead wind here. Just uh, nothing. We're literally floating at one mile an hour. So I had to break out the old uh, Mirage Drive here and I am just pedaling <clears throat> slowly but surely but we better get some wind I am not gonna pedal 26 miles so we will either float until dark and then pull over and camp wherever we're at or hopefully we get some wind but uh, that's your update for now such as sailing right you never know what's gonna happen but hopefully the wind picks up some. <laughs> I found a fellow Hobie and we are floating together here, filming each other. <laughs> Yo, whoa. I shifted wind side, but we're we're barely sailing along here, and uh, at least we got some company instead of floating by yourself. Yeah, but it still doesn't look good up there. I don't know if you guys can really see the water, but aside from a couple of wind ripples, we really don't have much going on. Sail to the other side. Yeah, we're finally moving along a little bit here, four and a half miles an hour <clears throat> caught a little bit of breeze we're gonna keep going to where that bridge is up there stop at uh, Navarre Beach again grab some ice and uh, some more water but that's your update we're actually sailing now which is a good thing so happy to be moving again um, my GPS was saying estimated time of arrival was gonna be like 830 I don't have any lights on this thing uh, but now we've got an ETA of 5.30, so as long as we can keep moving, we'll be okay. But uh, still sailing along with my Hobie buddy over here. We're passing people and uh, making fun of them. So <laughs> we're having a good old time out here. All right, guys, we're doing some close sailing now. Some regatta racing style. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can come and rub. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's see. We're drifting into them. We'll come in. We'll give him a little give him a little bump maybe. Oh, now he's gaining on me. Hang on. Now that I'm not in his spoils, I, I should be able to should be able to get up on him. close this, that's nascar close right there there we got him there we got him <laughs> slow him down some drag <laughs> that's good I, i'm pinned up against him now <laughs> And I'm slowing both of us down. <laughs> <laughs> I 
All right, guys, we're having a blast out here. <laughs> we're doing some racing here, guys. Racing the other Hobie. I stayed downwind of, of him for a while, downwind. But uh, I moved to the, the windward side. We're gonna see, see if we can pass him up, steal his wind from him. We're trimmed out. <laughs> Start pedaling. <laughs> so he's got a slightly larger sail than I do. He's got a little bit more weight. So we're pretty evenly matched. If I catch his spill, his wind spill from his sail behind him, I can pass him up. Let's see if we can pass them. Let's move in behind them, maybe. See if we can get around them. Let me inch around them here. We're going to get them there. I got the spill off his sail. There we go. We got the spill off his sail, guys. We're coming around them. Going to come around them on the leeward side. Oh, oh he's trimmed up. <laughs> These two Hobies are pretty evenly matched. Got to grab some of his wind again. Steal some of his wind. Yeah. If I stop running into you now. <laughs> yeah, run you into the point. Then I can win. There we go. Yeah. Come on, get around them. Come on on the leeward side. There we go. Oh, shit, almost lost my hat. All right, there we go. Now we got around him. He's gonna try and he's gonna cut back and try and get me. <laughs> I went into the wind. Ah, we just swapping back and forth, guys. It's fun. But all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay attention to sailing here before I crash into him. So. I would give you the side view on the camera, but I, I think it died. I can't get it to turn on. So we'll uh, just keep sailing along here, playing and racing. And uh, we are should be scheduled about five o'clock. We're making some good progress. It, it used to say eight, uh, but the wind really picked up. Now it says we'll get there about five o'clock. So plenty of time to set up camp and things. So we'll, uh, we'll keep playing here. I'm going to jump off the camera before I crash into his ass. Ooh-wee, boys. It's starting to get pretty choppy up in here. Woo-woo. We are... Freaking rocking now. Man, oh man. The adventure just never stops, does it? Never stops. Woo! Everything I own is soaking wet. It is crazy. It's like ridiculous. And we're slowing down here. Pretty good. Probably gonna have to uh, do the old sump. <laughs> Gonna have to do the old manual bilge again. I'm pretty sure that we're we're getting full of water here. We're swamping out again, guys. Swamping out. Alright. I'm gonna have to bilge out here and then continue on, I think. So uh we're gonna do that. Alright guys, 
We're making a run for the uh, shore up here. Try and see if we can get some calmer water up over here. I am swamping out here. I've got to bilge, but the problem is last time I just uh, pointed into the wind, went irons, furled the sail in and pumped out. But the, it's so choppy right now that if I'm trying to pump out, it's just going to be putting more water in the hatches with these waves. So we're going to just uh, make a run over here. Maybe we can find a little calm spot up against these pilings or something where I can pump out. Yeah, we full, boys. The, uh, the back batteries are underwater. I don't know if you can see this white here by the connectors, but I don't think the batteries like the uh, salt water too much. So there's like some corrosion or leaking or something. I don't know what's going on there. But uh, we're going to pump out <coughs> and, and get back on the way here. All right, boys, we rolling again. Uh oh. My partner here's got his uh, sail furled in. Looks like he's got an issue. I didn't notice it for a while. We're gonna run over there and check and make sure that he's good to go. I don't know if you guys can even see him. I know these GoPros make everything look so far away. Yo, okay. Full downwind. Lost my radio and everything. All right, anyway, we're gonna go check on him. The adventure just, whoa, the adventure just won't stop, will it? All right, guys, he's good, we're underway. The issue now is though we are five miles from the point and we're only going three miles an hour. It's going to be dark in, uh, it's going to be dark in about an hour and a half. So I am not sure if uh, we're going to make it before dark. <clears throat> but we're going to give it our, our old college try, right? But it's a, uh, it's a wild one today. It's a wild one. Woo boys, we made it. Sorry for the water on the camera. You're just gonna have to deal with it. Man, what a hell of a trip. So we uh, we made it to Dead Man Island. It's uh. We're full of water. Hopefully my food's still good. I know that everything I own is soaking wet. My goodness, I mean, I can't even dry the camera off. That's the problem. Is that better? What a hell of a day. But uh, we made it up here. Whew. And uh, I got some friends coming over with their boat. And they're going to uh, bring me a blanket and a sweatshirt, I hope. But we're gonna drain the boat. I'm gonna hang my stuff up to dry on some of these trees right here. And uh, you can't even see some of these trees right here. Thanks for following along on this day. <coughs> That's gonna do it for day three. And I will see you guys in the morning for day four and the trip back home. Stay tuned, it ain't over yet, guys. All right, guys, day four, getting ready to roll out, head back over to the truck here. We've got our campsite pretty much all packed up. We are loading up the Hobie, and we're gonna make our way back over to where we started. It is almost like glass out there, so there's not that much wind, I don't know. You know, if there's gonna be any kind of action or nothing like that, presumably not, which should just be a kind of a slow float all the way back. But uh, if something interesting happens, you know, I'll try and turn the camera on for you. All of my other GoPros and charging batteries are dead. So this is it, it's the only camera I got left. So let's uh, get on back to the, to the dock there and finish this video out. We have shoved off, leaving Dead Man's Island. Our quarantine period is over. We made it. And we're cruising on over to my buddy Justin's boat. 
sit there for a second, socialize with him, and uh, then we'll make our way back. You can see, hopefully, that it's like glass out here. So I am pedaling along, and I really don't want to pedal all the way back to Fort McRae. But maybe we will get some wind later on this afternoon and be able to sail back. So let me go over here and uh, I'll give you an update once we move off of uh, this cove. All right, had a nice uh, visit with my buddy on his boat there. And we've got the GPS set for the boat ramp where we launched and we are making our way back there. Now, one issue is it's 14 miles away and we have no wind at all. So right now I'm pedaling. Really don't wanna pedal 14 miles. Hopefully the wind picks up, but we gotta get there before dark. And while I'm thinking about it, a little ecological note you see here, I've got four days of trash in my trash bag and I'm packing out my trash. Don't destroy the environment, people. Pack your trash out, it's not that big a deal. Okay, anyway, we're gonna hope for some wind when it picks up. I'll give you an update on whether we're actually sailing or not. Until then, stay tuned. Well, I've pedaled a couple miles three quarters of the way across Pensacola Bay. As you can see here, from over there to about right here, still no breeze. I'm tired of pedaling. So we're gonna float for a little bit. I feel like a castaway, just kinda floating along, waiting to land on some island. But I'm gonna float for a minute, and then I guess we'll pedal some more. All right, we finally got into some wind here. Doing uh, about three and a half mile an hour. But at least we're actually sailing. Got the Mirage Drive out and the plug in. And uh, we're finally making some headway. Though I pedaled almost all the way across the bay. Finally got some coastal wind here. So it looks like we should be able to relax and just enjoy the float back to the uh, back to the truck there. Now we're sailing. Ah, oh, what a beautiful sail. Doing four and a half to 4.8 miles an hour. Trimmed up nicely into the wind. And this is the life right here. Nice pleasurable sail not too choppy where you're getting bombarded by spray but making good headway nice breeze to keep you cool this is why i came out on the trip right here and what a fantastic end to the trip absolutely gorgeous
yes whoo I did it guys 120 miles in the Hobie by myself no power assist no toes shoo actually it wasn't even 120 miles the event was 120 miles I did 132 miles and the reason is because I'm six miles from the start point where they measure the 120 miles so six miles to the point six miles back 12 miles times or plus times plus 120 132 oh, 132 miles what are my takeaways real quick well takeaways are I knew this was a wet ride it is really wet uh, everything gets wet some things for the next trip things that we've got to work on kind of a summary our front hatch here uh, leaks we made it a little bit better by tightening the bungees and removing the uh, removing this upper seal here if I can get it off of there we took this upper seal off here and it sits down on there a little bit better but you can see the water in here when you get waves that splash up it just hits under this lip so there are some mods people do for that that's number one number two we need to get probably an auto bilge set up here if we're going to be doing rough surfing things like that uh golf fishing and uh, that kind of situation I can't stop and use the manual bilge pump here because if the waves are crashing over the uh, the Hobie, you know, you, you try and open a hatch to pump out and more water goes in. Ask me how I know. So that's number two. Uh, number three, I need to buy a dry suit. Uh, not a crazy like winter Arctic dry suit, but I need to get a lightweight dry suit um, because even though it's 85 degrees outside, and the sun is shining when you're soaking wet and that wind spills off the sails i was shivering the first two days um got a little sinus thing going on here because of it so uh that's number three and finally number four i need better dry bags uh like real dry bags i've got these little crappy dry bags if you follow the channel you saw when i bought those they don't work for crap trash bags do okay but really what I need to do is I need to set up uh, you know some boards or something here where I can strap my dry bags even if I just put them on the trampolines but strap all my dry bags out here leave the hull pretty much empty um, and we should be good to go there so really that's it man that's my takeaways there were some lessons learned it was a hell of an adventure that's for sure I didn't think it was going to be easy, but I didn't think it would be this adventurous. <laughs> so I had a fantastic time, and I appreciate you guys for watching through this whole thing and supporting it. I hope you got some entertainment out of it. If you want to see more of this stuff, me just doing crazy adventures with the Hobie, uh, you got to hit the, the like button. Um, I don't know what you guys like, what you don't like, so please hit the like button. If you enjoyed this little Hobie series here, uh, if you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down button. I don't care. You know, let me know what you think. Drop a comment uh, if you have any tips or tricks. If you've done this and you've got some info for me, uh, leave a comment. If you just want to say good job or you're an idiot, drop a comment. Let me know. But that's going to do it, guys. I uh, I wanted to get some more drone footage and stuff, but man, my, my drone box got all wet and it's just was a nightmare uh, trying to get drone footage, as you saw. Anyway, we'll get all that organized out. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys on the next one.